Paris in the fall, the last months of the year and the end of the millennium. The city holds many memories. in the fall, the last months of the year and the end of the millennium. The city holds many memories for me, of cafes, of music, of love, and of death. Hey, Carl, how's it going, buddy? You all right? sound a bit awful so I figured broken sword's the ideal one because I don't have to talk so much well, I this. This is as I far picked myself trip. up all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic life went on around me but the explosion was to change my life forever yeah, it's, it is like um, oh definitely cheesy on the uh, PlayStation 1 originally. Uh, right, first things first. Uh, how do I get to the menu? Right. I do love the music of uh, Broken Sword, but I'm just going to take it down a bit. Save. I need to put some there. Uh, no, I 
it. The umbrella had protected me from the bomb blast, but it was of no use to me now. Wrapped around the lamppost was a newspaper. Oh, the leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. That was the only news story. The rest was rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. Then I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah ed -Din, 1345. Try and keep my coughing and my sniffing and everything else to a, a minimum, or at least try and grab the mute button in time. But yeah, no, I've never, I've never played the uh, the, the Hobbit. I'm honest. It was a Paris daily tabloid newspaper, full of sex, scandal, and sports results. blast had blown out the glass, leaving a gaping hole. The umbrella had protected me from the bomb blast. I contemplated crawling under the umbrella and pretending none of this had ever happened. It was the body of the old man. It was hard to believe I'd seen him alive only minutes before. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. I needed a stiff drink but I hated the taste of brandy. Oh, my head. Never again. How much vodka did I drink? Oh, no, don't tell me. What is your name, Shelley? George Stobart, ma'am. Oh, American. She asked the question quite innocently, but I could sense her reserve. It was something which seemed to afflict all Europeans. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. You could be in shock. No alcohol. What about the old man? Is he dead? Yes, he is. Oh, mon dieu. No matter how many times I see that faint, it is still one of the most over-exaggerated faints ever. But I still love it. Right. Let's go and have a look outside, shall we? I mean, I can't even. I've played this game so many times. I know what to expect. I know where to go. So I can't even... I'm not even going to act dumb and be like, oh, I wonder what to do next. I'm going to, like, click on everything because of... It's just brilliant. This game is a masterpiece. But I can't exactly be like, oh, I'm really stuck. I don't know what to do. Or I don't know what's going to come next. I know this game off my heart. What I'm going to have to do is try my hardest not to be saying any of the lines as I go. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. But yeah, I will be, I, you know, I play this game so many times, I will be uh, just sort of clicking everything, just so that if people ever watch it who have never had the joy of playing this game, don't be down on things. Please, please, 
Hold it. I got that. Whoa, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Ah, can't can't make, make up your mind. mind. Huh? I demand to see, see the American I told you I will stop. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Moo. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply no, no. like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe, march. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Stop holding your breath at once. Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Mou? Oui, monsieur. But I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. Yeah, I will. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Clearly, the killer knew of his presence and... How many times have I warned you about premature extrapolation? All we know is that he is dead. It seemed reasonable to assume... A great detective assumes nothing. nothing. Take McRae, for instance. But, but he was a fictitious character, monsieur. Why, he was no more real than Poirot or Tintin. That's different, Moo. They were comedy Belgians. Anyway, it is unlikely that even you will learn much from talking to the dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. And maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Is no? Uh, yeah. I guess so, apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? We did? Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon, the picture is forming in my mind. And it is, and no it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Moo? She'll leave. She confirms the American statement. A clown with an accordion, no doubt an elaborate and eccentric disguise. Very well. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Academic? You are about to witness a scientific breakthrough.
can I speak to me for? Excuse me, mademoiselle? Mademoiselle? Hi, my name's George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yeah, that's right, on holiday in Paris. Some holiday, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with an hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I am Nicole Collard from La Liberté. Well, what's that, some kind of nightclub? Uh, no, it is a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you can interview me about the bombing. You know, an eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. Oh, God. It's him again. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Who's the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planteur. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. Why won't you tell me about this clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story, and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. I'll be humble with you. Fine, I'll uh, see you soon. Excuse me, Sergeant. You are the inspector. Go on, monsieur. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kind of... I owe it to him to find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just... Grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go on and try to forget. I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Plantau. Is that so? You knew him, did you? No, but... We'll know everything there is to know about him soon enough. I'm trying to be helpful here. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. I really did see the clown. He ran into the alley across the street. Did you follow him? That's your job, not mine. An armed chase through the streets of Paris? That's not our style, monsieur. Inspector Rosso may be unorthodox, but he's not crazy. Did you find the victim's briefcase yet? No, sir. The inspector gave me specific instructions to guard this door. Until he countermands these orders or backup arrives, here I stay. How did you and Rosso arrive at the scene of the explosion so quickly? You arrived within minutes. Was it a tip-off? Inspector Rosso's sources are a perpetual mystery to me, monsieur. There are some who say he has made a pact with the devil. And what do you think? I think he is the, the devil. devil. What is Rosso doing with that girl? He is giving her the once-over. As you Americans say. Huh? Once he gets his teeth into a case, nothing will shake him off. Was he serious about all that psycho detective stuff? Of course. Inspector Rosso is a pioneer and a visionary. His revolutionary methods, once perfected, may change the face of law enforcement forever. I can't see it taking off in LA. I found this in the street, Sergeant. That, monsieur, is a newspaper. No? No. There's a note written on it. Salah Eddin, 1345. Ah, 
So, the meeting with the clown was planned. Well, how do you make that out? The time of the explosion was between half past one and two o'clock, Nesta. Well, I guess so. But what about the name? Ah, uh ha! -huh. That stumped you, hasn't it? I have never been stumped, as you put it, in my life, monsieur. It is the name assumed by the clown, no? Salah Eddin the clown? I don't think so. See you later, Sergeant. Talk to this builder then. Get me hands on his tools. Actually, just one tool. Now we have to remove one thing. Come here, you. Hi. Can you spare a few minutes? I thought you'd been arrested. No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, <laughs> I thought that was it. Those automatics by quite a bunch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Take a look at this. Hey! You're a cop? Don't shout about it. I'm working undercover. Who are you looking for? That's confidential. Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Girl beat. I could have knocked this block off. Did you recognize the old man? No. Should I have done? Was he a celebrity? No, but I guess he is now. His name was Plantow. Was? He's dead then? Yeah. That's too bad. Now I wish I hadn't called him what I did. If only I could turn back the clock. If only I'd been more tolerant. Regret and remorse are strange emotions. They really bring out the hammiest actors in people. Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Huh! Those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. Look, I know you're busy, but surely you'd have noticed a clown. I told you already. I didn't see a thing. He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. He'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. Bah! Look at this! Damn bleeding out liberals! Ja! Save the dolphins, catch them, and eat them, I say. All that fuss over a bunch of fish. Nah, that's more like it. Look at the size of those. Like champagne bottle corks, no? Ah, what's this? Saladin running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend. Bucephalus reborn, mon ami. Like a streak of lightning she is. favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money on that night. Still one of my favorite characters. He is brilliant. Right, now I can grab his tool. I found a T-shaped tool in the box. I didn't know what it was, but it looked useful.
I took a deep breath and prepared to climb the drain pipe. I guess the clown had an escape over the rooftops. It smelled like someone had dumped a truckload of fish in a locker room on a hot summer afternoon. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. Let's go. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. The nose was hollow. Printed on the inside were the words, La Vise du Monde, Paris. up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. It was the scrap of material I'd found in the sewer. The card read, Augustin Rosso, and gave an address to the south of the Montparnasse Cemetery. It was the soggy tissue I'd found in the sewers. Hi there. Hold it right there. You, you're so right. I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. You won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? I was looking for a clown. Huh, ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon Dieu! That is awful. And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Huh? Mon Dieu! And then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah. That still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type, <laughs> just like you. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Ah, you need some sensible boots. You won't get far in those stupid sneakers. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, uh, she isn't hurt, is she? 
No, she's fine. Oh, thank heavens. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. <laughs> That's what you think. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Well, I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave, or do I have to call the police? Take a look at this false nose. I've never seen it before in my life. This is what I used to open the manhole cover. Just as I thought. You are up to no good down those sewers, weren't you? One slip and I would have been up to my neck. Do you recognize this material? I am not telling you anything. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, mm, disgusting. What on earth possessed you to show it to me? Someone has emptied their nostrils into it. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rousseau? What does that say? Hominoid division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your, your poise. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? Let's start over from the beginning and tell it just like it was. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh, no. He made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? So you don't want to hear about my experiences in the desert? I fought to make this country what it is today. I'm sure you did, but I'm a little short of time. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <laughs> you, you, you can't suspect her, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, uh, I know her quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? <laughs> Mais oui! Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. <gasps> oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know. But the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> a pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as 
an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todd Rick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74 98 59 You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little secret number that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. I have to be going. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. I'll let you out. I hope you find your man, Inspector. So do I. There was nothing inside the tent except a large toolbox. You yeah, want the phone. Alright, Todrick. Hello? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No, no, that's not possible. Oh, okay, uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Uh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Verte? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're saying that to make me think you don't know what I mean, but... Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Did you know that one of your customers was a part-time clown? If a guy feels happy with a funny nose and custard down his pants, what's the problem? Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy. Huh? The faithful puppy dog waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. Yeah, Todrick. Bonjour, Kula. Oh, hi. It's George Stobart, the American at the cafe. Oh, oui. Here's a uh, weird one, that one. You said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown, and I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Please. Well, it wasn't easy. Look, 
Why don't you come here to my apartment? Fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come right over. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I think there is a... Um, I don't think we're done with Todrick yet, if memory serves me right. He's a tricky customer. pushed against the door, but it seemed to be locked. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly just save it. There we go. Little bit of a quick oh, save. Hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good, and it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me, in the apartment block across the street. I tried the door, but it's locked. You know, I've told the landlord about that a million times. It is the damp. The whole building is like a sponge. It sucks up the moisture from God knows where. You mean the door is stuck because it's swollen? That is correct. There is an art to opening it. Don't shove it hard. Just give it a gentle nudge above the lock. Thanks for the advice. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows. Insufficient heating, it's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My, oh my. What a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? Ten francs, please, my dear. Ten francs? That's a ripoff. Please yourself. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Well, thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. Do you recognize this nose? No, monsieur. What do you make of this tool? Is it something a dentist would use? No, it's for raising manhole covers. Formidable. What dentist does she go to? What can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. What can you tell me about this tissue? Nothing. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently, just above the lock. Bonjour. I'm glad.
glad you could make it, monsieur. Please, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. Take a seat, George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers beneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. What's more, I know where he hired the clown suit, too. He had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck! Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? I took my photographs to the editor, but he wasn't interested. Can you believe it? He told me to drop the story. But you're not about to do that. Oh, no. I am going to find out what's behind these killings. You know what I think? It's a conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. I found this false nose in the sewer. It has La Risée du Monde printed inside it. The laughing stock of the world. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Why don't you put it on, Josh? No way am I wearing this. I look really stupid. Besides, he might have had a cold. George there, keeping the spread of COVID down. Good lad. This is the tool I use to get into the sewers. Fascinating, George. You're not interested, are you? Oh, of course I am. I think it was very brave of you to go down those sewers. Yeah? Well, it was kind of scary, but... Well, I had a job to do. I found a piece of material near the cafe. <laughs> When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George, it's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy's wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his left cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Oh, a crescent moon. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. I found this tissue down the sewer. Oh, oh that's disgusting, Georges. I think the stuff on it is grease paint like actors use, or clowns. It's still disgusting, get rid of it. How did Plantow get your name? Well, the newspaper, La Liberté, had written an article linking two unsolved murders, one in Italy and the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costume killer. Plantow said he could supply me with more information. Somehow, the clown must have known about our appointment. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arnaud Belota, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it! Millions of housewives literally spitting their butts off. Was he killed for his money? No. He had no living relatives and his fortune went to the orphanage where he'd grown up. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was led to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese green politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. He was committed to dismantling Japan's automobile industry. I can't see him gaining much support with a loony policy like that. Yamada was a man of vision. He was years ahead of his time. If you say so. How did he die? At the end, or should I say, flippers of a giant emperor penguin. 
a snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you what, I won't be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance of a big break. Or a premature death. You speak very good English for a French girl. Thanks. You speak very good English for an American. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, there is not much to tell. Well, how did you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought my first camera. I was eight and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes, my mother went off with her new boyfriend. I don't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted I should study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? Oh, God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Do you have a boyfriend? That's none of your business. May I use your telephone? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. And this is where, um, Todlick becomes useful, I think. Hello? Who is this? Mr. Todrick? Oh, it's you again. What now? Did you make a suit for a man with a scar on his face? A scar in the shape of a crescent moon? Maybe. Maybe not. Tell me where I can find him and I'll leave you alone. And if I don't? I won't leave you alone. I can't tell you anything unless you give me his name. Do you know where I can find the guy with the scar? I told you. Without a name, I can't help you. Oh, yes. I remember his name. Todrick. Yeah, thanks for nothing, Todrick. But yeah, I remember now what I'm I I'm going to do. back out to search for that clown. Where? Well, I guess I could visit the costume shop. Good idea. And the costume shop will get me his name. Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please, come in. Welcome. Leave the mundane world behind. For in these four walls, fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible. You'll be telling me next that you never shared your <coughs> elder sister's lingerie. I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of course. How can I help you? Uh, let's go straight in. Do you recognize this man? Oui, monsieur. I sold him some grease paint. Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. Best Imers number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La creme de la creme of Cespian accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two can. About this tissue. I have already given you my professional opinion. Are you sure this is the man who bought grease paint? Oui, monsieur. He chose two costumes, Bozo the Clown and Seamus the Pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. 
Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall anyone of that name. Are you sure this is the same man who hired the clown suit? Certainement, Monsieur Carr. Thanks for your help, buddy. Right. My pleasure, Todrick, I'm Monsieur. Coming for you. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> What are you trying to do, kill me? You did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift? Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. Todrick. Hello? Who is this? It's George Stobart again. Give what me the Hotel Ubu. I think it's Hotel Ubu. I found out the name of the guy I'm looking for. Is that so? Yeah. It's Khan. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? Yes, I delivered the suit to his hotel. The Hotel Ubu. Uh, uh, yes. I uh, don't remember the room number. It was... Upstairs. The second room on the right-hand side of the corridor. Thanks, Todrick. That's all I wanted to know. Now I've got you, Mr. Clown. Excuse me. Ah, Monsieur Stobart, n'est-ce pas? That's correct. You remember me. The retention of such data is part of my duty as a gendarme. That is our crime is fought through attention to detail, not intuition. Yes, yeah, sure. Do you know a man named Khan? He's a shifty looking guy with a scar on his left cheek. No, monsieur. Has this man any connection with the bombing of the cafe? Yes. I believe Khan was the name he used when he hired the clown costume. Is Rosso here? Yes, he is. You wish to speak to him? No, I'm not really. with you yet. I found this red nose in the sewer. What were you doing down there? Fishing for clues. That's where the clown went. You still insist you saw a clown, monsieur? Of course. And this novelty nose proves it. It will take more than a plastic proboscis to convince Inspector Rousseau. You don't want this as evidence, then? Certainly not, monsieur. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. It's the guy who bombed the cafe. The clown. This man looks nothing like a clown. He's taken off his grease paint and costume. Then there is nothing to link this man with the killing. Nothing? Look at those murderous eyes. Hmm. Hardly likely to get him convicted. Would you like to shake my hand, Sergeant? Not while I'm on duty, monsieur. The gesture could be misconstrued. Is Rosso here? Yes, he is. You wish to speak to him? Yes, I do. One moment, monsieur. Stobart is here to see you, monsieur. Did he say what it was about? No, monsieur. Very well. Hi, Inspector. Remember me? But of course, Mr. Stobard. My mind is a well-ordered faculty. A metal classification system that's the envy of the Bibliothèque Nationale. No tricks mark you, monsieur. Just exercise. Just as our muscles waste through inactivity, so our minds decay. But there is no need. If only people would learn to exercise their wits daily. If he was trying to impress me, it worked. He was pompous and patronizing, but he had style. Eh bien, if you called about the bombing, you're too late. Investigations have been closed. 
But I've been taken off the case. What about the murderer, the dead guy? It is out of my hands. Would you care to shake my hand, Inspector? Please don't be offended if I decline your offer, Stobard. The palms of my hands are particularly sensitive. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No. It's the face of a killer. The man who bombed the cafe? The photograph was taken soon after the explosion. He'd escaped through the sewers, leaving a trail of clues behind him. Circumstantial evidence, Stobard. None of it proves a thing. Don't you want to know what I found out about the killer? I told you, monsieur, the case is closed. I have washed my hands of the whole affair. Then I'll have to continue my investigations without your help. No. You must forget the business of the clown completely. Go back to being an ordinary tourist, Stobard. Did you find out the ID of the guy who was killed in the explosion? I already knew who he was. I heard that the bomb victim's name was Plantow. Your sources are reliable. He was a big shot at the Treasury, wasn't he? Maybe that's why you've been taken off the case. I'm sorry, monsieur. I cannot comment. What was that psycho detective business you did in the cafe? It is my theory that the passions evoked in violent crimes create ripples in the ether, invisible to all but the possessor of a highly developed and receptive mind. I'm impressed. Can you bend spoons, too? I didn't think a man of your obvious intelligence would stoop to mockery. I'm not mocking. I've had personal experience of the power of the mind. I used to get ignored at parties until I read a book that changed my life. Really? What was it called? Hypnotism for fun and profit. He looked at me as if I'd farted at a funeral. The power of mesmerism is a rare gift, not a party trick. You're not going to try any of that psychic interrogation on me, are you? Do you find the thought of my probing distasteful? Let's just say I'd rather you didn't. I've got more doubts than doubting Thomas when it comes to mysticism. Too bad. I think you would make an interesting subject under controlled regression. The day I let anyone mess with my mind hasn't dawned yet. So long, Inspector. stopped by and stopped in um, and hopefully I will be streaming some more of this in the next couple of days once I'm back to full health as I say it'll be I'll get the camera back off and I'll get the mic properly and <coughs> excuse me but yeah as I say thank you everyone that's uh, that stopped by um, and I do, you know I do I do really appreciate it um, Thank you.